to make things even better for those out there listening, it wasn't just the five million dollar contract that she won last week. It was a jock contract and a five million dollar award. So, uh, and on top of that, she had uh, the opportunity to price out four other projects that were negotiated jobs. So, very exciting week in the GovCon Edu family. Very exciting week for Randy. But I wanted to bring this video today to share uh, because a lot of times we tend to uh, only see the upside, right? When we when we look at that chart that shows the icebergs, uh, we look at the upside and we don't see what happened below. So I wanted to share with you that today because I thought that that was important. And so few people will actually watch this video. Uh, this video was shot back in 2018. And I want you to see, okay, where Randy was at in 2018 because I think that capturing this experience and sharing this will help some of you out there who may be in, discouraged and need a little bit of encouragement. Let's listen. Sam. Yes. Like, you know, like set up the company yes. as a rent, more like a management company. Okay. Yes. You go, Listen, you can put as many next codes as you like. You can put whatever next code you like. In fact, I've had contracting officials reach out to me to take on jobs because they needed to get them out and, and, and done. And they told me what NAX goes to add to my profile in order to do the jobs. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's when you get. That's All when right. you. That's when you start having relationships with mm -hmm. the people. Codes as you go along the process, right? So it's not like it. A nice. It's not a one one and done. You can nah. uh, go through and you can add, add nice on, codes. take them off. You know, change them. It doesn't matter. The only time that it really starts to matter is if when you apply for one of your small business certifications. That's when they look at your primary NAX code. But up until then, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Well, I am starting to work on the woman-owned certification. So So then you need to make a decision which one is. Now, what's interesting about this video is that Randy mentioned she's working on the woman-owned certification. Uh, and in fact, none of her contract awards were based on any type of certification. So what's interesting is that, again, like a lot of people out here who start off with the myth of the certification, and that's what we're going to use to drive uh, contract opportunities. Ultimately, at the end, she didn't use any of those certifications. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out was, uh, in the beginning, she talked about setting up a management company and having all these NAX codes. And ultimately, what ended up being her success was what we said here, which was the forming the relationship with the person. And let me let me just share this so you can see from this standpoint. This video was captured in November of 2018. I just wanted to show that to people out here. Uh, but ultimately, uh, in the beginning, she asked about the NAX codes and setting up multiple NAX codes and setting up a management style company and registering a SAM and becoming a woman-owned business. And none of that, right? She didn't use any of that stuff. So a lot of people out there are thinking that, Eric, getting my NAX codes, getting my SAM registration, getting my profile set up, yes. I've taken some steps, and you have taken some steps, but ultimately, at the end of the day, it's relationships that's going to drive the or going to have to be the activity that really counts at the end of the day. So until you have gotten from behind your computer and you've talked to some people, emailed some people, reached out to some people, talked to a federal human, as Judy Bratt likes to say, that's where uh, it's going to make all the difference in the world. That's going to be your primary code for that. Okay, because I remember you saying that um, it, it, you can limit yourself based on the, um, I guess, the averaging, right? Right, yeah. The so, it, right, right, right. Yeah, I, mean, I listen to you. I listen. <laughs> no, no, so. you're, that's right. So, which, so I'm looking at your event management codes. So out of the 5, 6, 1, 19, 20, and then the 7, 2, 1. I don't know if you heard that. Event management code. Okay, all her projects today have been in construction, and she's looking at event management code at that time. 110. Which yeah, one of those that one's not going to work. That 7211110, I, I had emailed back and said, okay, I realize it's not going to probably work for us because when I went and dug a little bit deeper, um, like who were the actual vendors, Right. it seems like that is actually hotels ah, you see. providing that service right. directly. So I'm like, okay, that's not us. So I, I know I need to stick with the five six one nine two zero. And and you see that's how you how that's how you make a decision based on process elimination. 
By the way, what's interesting is that I actually, uh, now that I'm looking at this video, I, I'm laughing because I capture it in a white T-shirt. But I was recording these calls and offering free calls to people who agreed to have their cells recorded to share with others later. And um, I'm very happy uh, that I was able to capture Randy's story. But look, look at what she's talking about, event management codes, multiple NAX codes, um, limiting herself. Um, and so all of these things, right, that at the time were so critical and so important to her, today, none of that stuff matters. And I want to share that with folks. And I, and I also, let's, let's look at a couple of things, because I think this is important for people to remember um, out here. Because one of the things that I like to say is that people don't quit, right? So you have to stay interested. And, and we're playing the long game. By the way, um, there's another story that I like to share in this video as well. But here, right, so that video is 2018. Randy's asked me questions. Now, fast forward to 2020, which is, again, November 2018. So you're two months out of December and then February 2020. So it's just over a year where now Randy went from uh, being the person who's asking questions about all these NAX codes to having uh, SAP opportunities because of the relationship she built, people were looking for. Clay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Hey, Antoine. Edith, Pierce. No, I mean, pretty flyers. That's a nice. Look, there's people out here who are in these areas that have the ability to uh, do some of these projects and, and share her story and talk a little bit about some of those opportunities. And maybe we could pull some people um, out from the woods and from you know the backyards and the boondocks who can do some of these contracts because. Um, the government has the need. They've got the opportunity. So, you know, like, I mean, because, because again, let's paint the whole picture. Really. Oh, you know, okay, you're skipping okay. steps for those newbies out here who are unfamiliar with it. You just, skip it, newbie. you know, you know okay. like, come on, Randy, you didn't know this. How long ago? You didn't know this not too long ago. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I said I still feel like a newbie. Okay. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Following the field. So, following your course, right? Uh -huh. Finding the gatekeeper, which is the Ostabu, the small business liaison. I started there. Actually, I met. Okay, I want to stop because um, um, here we have this video on finding the Ostabu. So again, I'm bringing in all the content that this is, by the way, everything on here is free. So I'm bringing on here all the content um, that we have. And like she said, finding the Ostabus. If you haven't watched this video already, breaking the government contracting code, using Austin. That's the videos that she's referencing. Um, and then the course, you know that we have the course at govcongiants.com forward slash pricing. So let's go ahead and here, listen to Randy continue. Met her at a, the very first federal um, event that I went to. And I kind of just have held on to her since August of last year. And I didn't even have a client when I first met her. I just knew I wanted to hear what they were doing in our area. So when I did have um, officially my client and um, working on that space, then I made the point, I was able to get in to see her and she's definitely an advocate for small business. So she, she heard us out, wished we were 8A, you know, all the nine yards. So we were able to go and pull a teaming agreement together with an 8A company. All right, so, so what's interesting is that, um, like Randy said, when she first started, she didn't have a client. Randy realized early on that she didn't have the capacity to take on projects herself. Um, and so she needed more capacity to be able to service the government's needs. A lot of us have to get serious and be honest with ourselves in terms of where we're at compared to what the government's looking for. And we discussed that in some of my other content that we have on here. I didn't even reference that video, but um, we have to look at what is your capacity and what do you have the ability to do uh, right now, right? Given the resource that you have, not if the government gives you money, not if somebody lends you money, not if you get that credit loan, not if you improve your credit. Right now, where you're at, we have to be serious with ourselves and say, okay, this is what I have the ability to do. Does this work for the government? If it does not, then we have to increase our capacity by teaming with someone that has the ability to execute and deliver, or at least meet the minimum requirements that the government's asking for. And so that's what Randy did. Uh, 
and I sent her an update because I'm always in contact with her to keep that relationship. By the way, um, something else that I forgot to mention is that she referenced that she met this person at an event and the person was an advocate for small businesses. That is so critical. Um, when we talk to folks out there and we're saying to them, find your advocate, find the person. Look, we're, I talk to a lot of people and a lot of folks get discouraged because they say, Eric, well, I spoke to this person. They didn't call me back. I emailed this person. They didn't respond to me. That, that doesn't mean that that person has any uh, particular feelings towards you or that um, there's any type of uh, disconnect. It's just you're looking for the person who is in the mindset of needing an advocate at this moment. And, and so we just continue to network, build relationships, uh, talk to folks out there until we find that true advocate, almost like in the social media, true fan. So, so Randy found that one true advocate, and she's been holding on to that person ever since. Going, and I forwarded the new teaming agreement, our real, our new capability statement with the teaming agreement partner information. And she was intrigued and like, okay, come back in, let's have another meeting. And this time I pushed on her to have, can we have some contracting officers? Can we have some decision makers besides yourself in the meeting? And I think this is so valuable. And, and, and it's crazy that only uh, 2000 people have actually watched this video here uh, because all of the information that Randy's given are gems, she's dropping jewels. People ask me, Eric, when I go to the meetings, what do I say, what do I do? Randy had a meeting. By the way, uh, if for those of you who have not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And also, if you have a chance and you want to receive more information, um, sign up for our newsletter. We have a newsletter that's more than 10,000 people out there, and we let you know about all the events, all the happenings, everything that we're doing upcoming and the future. So, so make sure to subscribe to that as well. Um, but I want to go back to something which is interesting. Randy said um, that in this particular video, uh, she had the meeting. And then the second time she had a second meeting, which is the capabilities briefings, she told you exactly what she did. So a lot of people out here, what are they, you, you can learn from the people who are ahead of you, the people who have come before you, learn from what they did. Randy explained to you in this video exactly what she did. She said, the second meeting, I pushed on her to bring some decision makers in the room. That's, that's, that's gold. I mean, those are jewels. And she's like, well, I can't guarantee it, but I will try. Okay. And I hadn't spoken to her in a, about a month or so. And then I reached out to her again. Okay, we're planning on meeting. Um, again, can you have contracting officers, whoever there? And she was like a little snarky. I can't control what they do. I'm like, I know, but I'm so appreciative of you even trying, right? That was my response. Sure. And when we got there, sure enough, she had two contracting officers and an engineer for me, okay. which was ironic that, you know, I, I had already gotten the forecast list because that was one of the things you taught us. Mm -hmm. so Hold up. She said she brought a forecast list because that's one of the things I taught you. Are you actually doing the activities? Ostabu, gain access to the forecast list. Okay, this video. Take a look at the date, 2017, May 2017. We lined this stuff up. She's doing the activity. She's telling what she's doing. All of this information is here. How many people are may have made it to? We're at the 14 minute mark. How many people have actually stayed to watch the entire 14 minutes? Those of you who have stayed, do you see how this makes sense? Do you see how this adds up? This is the formula. This is the magic. This is where the magic starts to happen. Stay interested. Stay consistent. Put in the work. Find your advocate. These are the things that is going to lead to success. So I had already gotten the forecast list um, and had emailed that actual engineer since last October. And... Mm. And so when he said, oh, I've never heard, I said, well, I've emailed you. So one of the things I like to say is we take a three-prong approach, right? So we, we come at them from all angles. All right. So now we've got um, here. And this is, this is what we teach in the course is that Randy had already looked at the forecast list and looked at projects. 
So she already had an idea of the project. She already emailed the engineer, okay? And then when she set up the meeting with the, with the Ostabu that brought in the contract, and, and the contract officers and the engineer, she, she, her email was already in this person's inbox. So, so now they can start connecting the dots and finding out that Randy is a serious candidate and she ain't going nowhere. And that's the important thing. Let me tell you exactly when. And I pulled it up right there in the meeting. That's Randy, by the way. Y'all know Randy. That's Randy. That's Randy. She do me the same way. I pulled it up right there in the email and, they, and said, oh, don't worry. It was October 21st. And he's like, oh, okay, let me go find it. And he's like, oh, I see you now. So anyway, okay. so those opportunities. At least he didn't delete your email. He, that's right. That means he hadn't even probably checked it. But yeah, there you go. Fair. But at least okay. he still had it. Yeah, okay? yeah. So what does that mean? Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. This is a 45 minute video. If you have not watched this video, take out your notepad, go to this video and watch it now. So anyway, um, the two contracting officers both just talked about their, the SAPs that they do, which is the simplified acquisition purchases. All right. So Randy just mentioned simplified acquisition. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. One hour, 30 minute video, okay, with Judy discussing micro purchases, all right, simplified acquisition. Why are we only have 1200 views? There's 50,000 of you out here that are complaining that wish you can get a contract opportunity. 1200 of you watched the video, probably 500 of you made it till the end, all right? Judy is telling you. You're first contract you'd really like to win for what and with who put that in the chat because that's going to give us something to play with on our topic tonight don't you think eric yes i love it i started it off just in case you slow pokes were messing around <laughs> so the first contract with what agency you like to win and who, who you like to win it with so again randy we we are uh, all i'm doing is essentially showing you how all these things intertwine and i hope the folks that are still on continuing to watch this will learn how these things start to intertwine. And as you become more familiar with the jargon, more familiar with the terms, uh, and you start doing the activities, it will you can start really connecting the dots on that. So again, I just wanted to uh, reference this other particular video that we have that discusses micro purchases. Let's go back over here to Randy and see what Randy's talking about. Mm -hmm. And they're $150,000 and less for that particular agency. And one of them said that, you know, she's had to bid jobs, like one job four times, for example, before she could even get anyone to take it. Did anyone hear that? She had to bid one project four times before she can get anyone to take it. One of the things that I, that I like to say is that, again, these people are having the same problems, the same challenges. We think that it's so competitive and there's so many people out here that that like we don't have a shot. And she just told you this came from a contracting officer that said sometimes I have to bid the same project four times, four times to get a person to show up. Now with Randy's assistance, okay, we can put it out to people in our network and that's what we do. How many of you are on the email list, if you're on my email list, have seen the emails where we ask you for, again, look at, even look at the title of this particular video, all right? So what does it say? SAP opportunities and going unfulfilled nationwide. We were looking for people in Texas. We were looking for people in North Carolina. We were looking for people out in California to help us fulfill these requirements. Um, recently, we put out a request for, what was that? Um, and New Jersey, we put out a request for people. So again, we are trying to help bridge the gap for folks out there who are really serious about this and who are really interested in this. Randy is dropping some jewels. Um, the other one said, oh, I wish you guys would go out to, you know, all these states. You know, I really need people. And my... They need people. Did you hear that? They need people. Client at the time kind of, my client kind of shut that down. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right, well, all right. we can't, but we'll focus here in Texas. Okay. So that's how it got started. Now, someone asked a question in the chat about your industry. 
construction. Okay. So again, um, I think that you get the gist, right? There, there's a lot of things um, happening, and, uh, a lot of moving parts, but really uh, the, the gist of it is, again, I wanted folks out here to see, to understand how in just a short time, and really, I mean, from the time that the, the November 2018 video to this video, uh, you know, this is around a year's time because if you figure December 2019, so it's just over a year and a couple months that Randy had already built this relationship up. And in fact, it started back in August, so it was under a year that it took her to actually make this connection and make this relationship. And so uh, within less than a year's time, she built the relationship. And now uh, moving forward, she was given the chance to help uh, some folks at the contracting level fulfill opportunities around the nation. And that's where we create this video. And then fast forward uh, to uh, today's news of winning multiple contracts. Now, even though the five million is the one that's most widely celebrated because of the large numbers, in fact, she's done probably uh, close to six other projects uh, at the simplified acquisition level. So again, um, you know, for the folks out there who are wondering what does it take, uh, it takes consistency, it takes staying interested, it takes participating. Um, we, you know, we showed this video because it mentions, are you marketing the same way to Austin Booth during COVID? And the answer is yes. Um, and again, in fact, we, this video only has 360 views, right? And, but people ask me the question 300 times on my emails, what are we doing during COVID, right? And we can't do capability briefings, we can't do this, this, and that. This is a short video that discusses this, this thing. And if you look here in the background, that guy right in the middle is Chris Facey, who won a $21 million contract. Um, so I just want to show people out there because uh, we do have a goal, and our goal is to help 200 companies out there, small businesses, achieve $5 million. And so today we have successfully, we have four companies that have hit that mark. And we want like for one of you to be one of those companies as well. So I just wanted to share that with folks. I hope that this video helps some people out here. I hope that it encouraged some people and it inspired some people. If you have not already signed up on our email list, sign up for our email list. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe so you can receive all the notifications of when we go live. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Thank you so much.